Hardwired is another one of the three gear sets that has been introduced into the game with Rule Tier 5. And unlike the other two, you cannot actually get this gear set from just farming the Black Tusk. Uh, and yeah, for those that don't know, you get the other two gear sets as drops from farming Black Tusk. Uh, the more you know, I guess. This gear set, however, requires you to complete a specific assignment. Uh, get all the blueprints for all six parts and then also farm for specific materials. So in this video I wanted to go over how to get the six piece, what you need to do to get it, and then also what the gear set does and if it is any good. Because maybe, maybe you don't really want it if, uh, if it's not all too strong. So we're gonna go over all of that today, I guess. So yeah, as soon as you complete Tidal Basin and make your way into World Tier 5, there will be a new assignment for you to do, which you can access from the projects menu on the map. It will be called the Hardwired Prototype, so it's not too hard to find. And the description is pretty lengthy, but essentially what it comes down to is that you'll need to collect six special components and donate those to the project that you're looking at, which will then in return give you six blueprints. And these are the six blueprints for the mask, the chest, the backpack, and the gloves, and all that stuff uh, for the hardwired gear set. To collect all these parts, you'll need to grind specific missions. Each part can drop from a different boss in a different mission. Uh, and luckily, which missions you'll need to do is actually told in the description of this uh, assignment. So you gotta do the Grand Washington Hotel for the M component, Jefferson Trade Center for the C component, Federal Emergency Bunker for the B component, and so on and on and on. I'll leave it on the screen for just a little bit longer so you can take a look at it yourself, because after completing this assignment in-game and donating the components to uh, the assignment, uh, you'll need to farm for some components again, except with the assignment already being completed, the game doesn't really tell you anymore where to get it. Now, it's always going to be at the same place, but if you forgot where to get specific components, then you're out of luck. So that's why I wanted to include a pretty lengthy part of this video, just so you can take a look at uh, where to find what component. And the best way that I've had these components drop is to play the assigned missions on the non-invaded mode, so not fighting the Black Tusk, on hard difficulty. If the mission is still in the invaded state, either change it manually, or if you're doing the whole invasion, then you might want to complete that first before starting these missions. But I think you gotta have it on the non-invaded state and that's enough. And then you also want to play it on at least hard difficulty. Uh, I don't know if these components also drop on normal. The description of the assignment doesn't tell you, but I just haven't seen it drop on normal yet. And honestly, on hard mode, I found that these components have about a 50% drop chance from the final boss, which is really, really high for the amount of extra effort that it takes over normal. Uh, I also know that it drops on challenging, but I don't know if the drop rate is increased, but... Honestly, I wouldn't find challenging worth the extra time and effort that it takes to complete because 50% on hard mode is already pretty high and honestly on hard mode you just cruise through the missions. Uh, aside from the components uh, from all the missions, you also have to collect 10 hardwired tech. And this is just some crafting materials that drops from any random black tusk NPC in the open world. Uh, I found the best way to farm for this actually to be the occupied dark zone. Now, a lot of people are probably, uh, oh no, dark zone, I don't want to go into the dark zone. But, uh, but in the occupied dark zone, there is nothing but Black Tusk NPCs. You can't go 20 meters without seeing them. Uh, and these materials actually go straight into the inventory. So even if you get the materials and then die, it doesn't really matter. You can just respawn and continue farming. So uh, honestly, occupied DZ is the best place to get it. Uh, and I'm willing to put money on the fact that you probably won't be spending more than 15 minutes in here just to get uh, 10 of these for the for the project if you just go for landmarks. After you have all the components, you can donate them to the project in the White House and you'll get your six blueprints all at once for the hardwired gear set. But that doesn't mean you're done yet because to craft these items you'll need crafting materials as well, a lot of them. And not only the normal ones, but also the special components. Again, yes, you gotta farm for those again. For each gear piece, you'll need to farm one of those special components. So for the for the mask piece, you'll need an M component. For the backpack piece, you'll need a B component. That's where the name also comes from. And this is why I said earlier that uh, I included the part into the video where you could just look at the description a little bit longer because if you're at this part and you completed the assignment, you now cannot see where those drop anymore. So if you're looking for a specific part and you forgot which mission that related to, well, you would be out of luck, so... Yeah, that's why that's why I left it in, basically. 
Aside from the special components, you also need, again, 10 of those uh, hardwired tech items, uh, which means you gotta go back to the occupied dark zone. Uh, although this time it's gonna take a lot longer, because if you want all six pieces, you'll need 60 of those materials in total, because you need 10 hardwired pieces for each. And the cap for this material type is actually only 30, which uh, is a bit weird if you need 60 to get the full gear set. I guess they didn't want you to craft the full gear set at once. Um, I don't know why though, so uh, you're gonna have to collect 30 of these, go back to the crafting station, craft 3 out of the 6 items, and then go back into the DZ and collect the remaining 30. It takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of work, it surely does, because you also have to replay all those missions on hard mode the whole time. Uh, but after you collect the materials again, well that's going to be the last step in uh, getting all these pieces, and now you'll have a guaranteed 6 piece hard wired gear set. So, now comes the question, is it worth the hassle? Uh, no. No, I, I, don't, I don't really think so. I mean, I would do it anyway, since you never know when those blueprints uh, for the gear sets might come in handy. Uh, maybe at some point they'll change the gear sets to make them more useful, but right now I don't believe that the gear set is particularly strong. So yeah, let's begin with the two, three, and four piece bonuses. Uh, the two piece bonus gives you 20% increased skill health, which means all deployable skills end up being 20% tankier. And that's actually not that bad, because this gear set really revolves around skills. Uh, and don't forget that deployable skills can also be healed up by your healing skills, which then makes it pretty hard for even other players, but of course also NPCs to kill those skills. Uh, the three piece is increased shock duration, which... I don't think it's too strong, but it synergizes as well with the five piece, so we'll look at that uh, very soon. And then the four piece is 20% extra skill power, which honestly is a pretty solid attribute as it allows the player to have less skill power on this gear to unlock the skill mods, which then allows for other stat rolls such as cooldown reduction and armor. So yeah, the five piece, this is pretty special because it makes it so that the hive, the turret, and even the pulse sensor skill, basically all the deployable skills that are stationary, get a electricity effect around them, which will shock nearby enemies every 10 seconds. And just before the shock is about to happen, there's a little visual effect as well. And honestly, I thought that this was going to be fairly broken in PvP when I read it. You know, the way I thought about it is simply throw a pulse sensor at the enemy and basically get a free shock grenade. But no, that's not actually the case. The range on this is only uh, about 3 meters from where the deployable skill itself is. And with the wind-up time and the constant spark effect on it, players should be more than capable to avoid even being shocked once. This is in stark contract to, of course, the video that I made uh, two days ago on ongoing directive, which gives you shock ammo that cannot possibly be avoided unless the player using the gun is literally missing his bullets. And I think that that is pretty broken and very annoying to play against, while this is on the complete other side of the spectrum, giving you a shock effect that is almost impossible to land in PvP. Uh, uh, but it's still pretty useful in PvE, and I think that's a good thing. You know, in PvE, I did see myself getting some value out of this, because oftentimes NPCs would try to kill the turret uh, as I placed it, which then resulted into a shock, so hey. Uh, I guess it's pretty nice, this feature in PvE. It's not bad. The six piece is where the real power of this gear set comes in though, because there are two parts to this. First up, the skill cooldown reset part. Uh, and again, this is subdivided into two more parts. If you manage to get a kill with a skill, the cooldown of the other skill gets reset. So, you know, uh, that's good. You get your skills back really fast. But then also, if you heal a friendly player while he has no armor, then the cooldowns for both skills get reset. And again, that's also pretty strong. Additionally, when a cooldown ends, which means when it gets to zero seconds and when you get your skills again, or when a skill gets to max charges, which in the case of the cam launcher uh, without mods would be three, then you get a healing and a skill damage bonus for 15 seconds, which you can then see as a buff underneath your health bar. So when you read this, this all sounds like a skill player's wet dream, right? One of the biggest weaknesses of the skills in the Division 2 are their very lengthy cooldowns. But with this, you can reset those with ease, right? Well, not exactly. I tried to play this build in a couple of different ways. Uh, I tried to play it in group and solo, and also in each of those cases with a couple of different skills. I tried two healing skills, two damage skills, and then I tried it once with mixed skills, one for damage and one for healing. 
I'll start off by talking about the two damage skills. I found this to be the least viable. It sounds good in practice as with two buffed up damage skills, they're sure to get some kills on NPCs, thus providing you the cooldown reset. However, in a group this doesn't really work too well because all the teammates are just stealing all your kills and you're not getting any value. And if you're playing solo, well, I guess the skills are getting kills, but what cooldowns are there to reset? Because if, let's say, you have two offensive skills, let's talk about the drone or a seeker mine or a turret. If those skills are out in the game and on the floor, the cooldown hasn't started for those skills yet. It's not like the Division early days where the cooldown starts as soon as the skill is placed on the floor. No, the cooldown starts when the skill duration has ran out. So, when you're using both skills at the same time, yeah, sure, they're gonna kill some NPCs, but... There is no cooldown to reset, so the gear set does nothing. This would mean that you would have to use your skills sequentially, one by one, to get the cooldown reduction value. But then, of course, because you only have one skill that you can use, you lose a lot of the kill potential that you have, which means that oftentimes the skill uh, doesn't get the kill, because again, either a teammate steals the kill, or you steal the kill from your skill. And even if you just let the skill do its thing and hope to get the cooldown, if you're playing anything above uh, normal difficulty, the NPCs can easily kill the skill as well before the skill can kill them, uh, even with some mods on the skills. Uh, not to mention that the turret skill can often only kill one or two NPCs at most before the NPC repositions, and the turret does then nothing. And I imagine that with PvP this is even worse. So yeah, two damage skills, I found that that doesn't really work. Then we have two healing skills, and we have the same issue again, really. Uh, obviously, when you're playing solo with two healing skills, it doesn't work at all, because you gotta heal a teammate from uh, when he has zero armor to get the cooldown reduction. But even then, if you play in a team and you heal a teammate that has uh, zero armor, you have your two skills out, you get the cooldown reduction, uh, but there's no cooldowns to reduce, so it does actually nothing. So again, you would have to use your skills sequentially, one by one. Uh, which, why would you want to do something like that on a healer build? It gives you less burst healing, so to speak. It makes you not use your skills at a time that you might need it. And even then, it is still not that strong. It's still a lot more situational than you think, because you gotta actually heal teammates from when they have no armor. And if you're playing with somewhat experienced players who don't all sit in the same piece of cover while clearing a landmark, or even if you're just playing some PvP with players running around, players are running around with their own self sustained builds. Players are running around, uh, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 meters away from you, so you're not always going to be able to heal those players, and I just found it so, so hard to proc the cooldown reduction. And even when it did, it oftentimes meant that I had both of my healing skills active at the time, and thus that I didn't get any cooldown reduction. And then, last up, I also tried a combination with the cam launcher and the attack drone, because I felt that this combination could at least uh, give me the most value out of the six piece. But still, it still doesn't feel that powerful. Of course, the drone, I chose the drone because the drone was able to chase NPC targets behind corners, unlike the turret, which then meant that it could finish low NPCs off more consistently and then give me one charge back for my cam launcher. Because the cam launcher is the second skill that I chose, because even though you only get one charge back every time the drone gets a kill, it's still better than getting nothing back when uh, your hive or your drone is already deployed, because then you get no value. So yeah, with uh, the cam launcher and the drone, there is some synergy, and I really have to say some synergy, because it still really isn't too strong, because again, if you're playing content that is anything above the normal difficulty, the drone can very easily be destroyed by NPCs. And that means that if the drone is destroyed, you gotta wait for the drone cooldown, and you're just sitting there like, wow, that's my whole build. It's not doing anything. Not to mention the big elephant in the room, that is it the best way that I found to run this build is with a cam launcher and a drone. Which is actually ridiculous, because both of those skills do not even benefit from the five-piece bonus, because that only works with the hive the turret and the pull sensor. So the whole gear set, the whole gear set part that gives shock to uh, the skills and the increased shock duration on the three piece, that's all not useful if you want to play this gear set and get the most value out of the six piece. And this just makes a gear set feel like kind of a mess to me and just not worth it ever if you consider what brand set builds can do. 
Just as with the other gear set, I can see what they try to do with this. A, um, a skill-based build that reduces cooldowns and that defends your deployable skills when players get close to it with a shock effect. But just 15 minutes of testing uh, combined with some game knowledge. And you should have known that this is gimmicky at best and useless at worst. And no matter what you do, clearing content with this build is always slower than with a brand set build. Whether it's the lack of damage that you have or the fact that you want to wait and not kill an NPC on purpose to get the proc on the drone, or the fact that your overall stats are just so much lower because you're missing out on so many talents from the brand sets. No matter in what way I look at it, this gear set just isn't good. I guess you could farm for the gear set, but uh, right now I don't think it's worth it. As always guys, I hope this helped out and I will see you all later, or like they say in the Netherlands, see you later.